Hello. Need to make a second part about Donald Trump. My last video was about is Trump the Antichrist? Of course, he's not the Antichrist. If you've been watching my videos, and uh, you should know, uh, no, Trump is not the Antichrist. And I made it, I, I made it actually clear that he is really part of this false prophet or the beast out of the earth. That's what he is. But if we go by this false definition of dispensationalism, yeah, we can pack him into this description of Antichrist, this end times ruler. And I'm assuming he is going to become president because, I don't know, I mean, it is pretty open, but what, do they want to put back Biden? And when I say they, I'm talking about the deep state. Who's the deep state? The Democrats? No, not the Democrats. The deep state is behind the Democrats. People say it's the lobby, it's the money people, it's the pharma. Keep going deeper, keep going deeper. Who is behind uh, our government? Who, where is the money coming from? Of course, then people are saying, well, the money is coming from, of course, the bankers or whoever has the money, but even they are used. So let's go even deeper. Oh, people are saying, somebody said, World uh, Economic Forum. Well, World Economic Forum is only a think tank. It's only a think tank in this big beast system. We have the beast system, and I said that in my last video. The beast out of the uh, the sea is Europe. The beast out of the earth is, um, is, of course, the USA. And so we have that system, and within that system is different organizations that are called think tanks, where the ideas are coming from, or at least they think the ideas are coming from there, but really they get approved, of course, from Satan, through the Vatican, through the Jesuits, okay? And so this is how everything is held together. Satan is the top man. He has made the plans for 2,000 years, almost, uh, on this system, this political system. We think that all the political system changed because Europe kind of, you know, doesn't, well, seems to have a democracy. They have a democracy because they want to tell them that they have a democracy. It's, it's a lie. It's, it's an absolute lie. The same thing with the United States. Yes, the United States started with a, well, people say, we don't have a democracy, we have a federation. Uh, democratic principles ruled our country. Free speech, uh, free uh, choice for people, religious, any choice, free religious, uh, educational, health choices, okay? That's what we had. However, eventually, because we did not protect our rights, people could come back in or, yeah, let's say the Roman Catholic Church because they had an interest from the beginning to destroy this country, this democracy. I'm going to use the word democracy. I understand that it's not a correct word to use. But this liberty for the people, only the Vatican has an interest in destroying the liberty of the people. So who is behind the Vatican? It's Satan. Satan is the only one who has the, uh, the interest in destroying the liberty of people. Why? Because God gives liberty. I made a video, I think even in English, about Calvinism and how Calvinists think that, uh, uh, you know, people don't have a choice. Uh, so we don't have freedom to choose. And for me, that is too Catholic 
too Catholic. That's why I think Calvin is a false prophet in this uh, Protestant movement. I just don't believe that he is really was really a reformer. He may have been another one coming into the Protestant movement to actually just destroy it. But very early on, the Catholic Church intervened very strongly again, and there was a power struggle between the Catholics, of course, and the Protestants, because the Catholics wanted to destroy what the Protestants started. And unfortunately, the Catholics did win. We see that. So we have now Catholics taking over our government. And believe me, it makes a difference. Because a Catholic first bows down to the Pope. It's almost like a Jew. Jews first bow down to their religion. That's why Zionism is so dangerous. Of course, a Christian does too. A Christian bows down to Jesus first. Really, they should be. Of course, it's not always the case because too many people have not even accepted him or are not following him. So, yeah, but see, when we... Um, have a uh, political organization, we have to make sure that everybody is accepted equally because that's what God gave us. God gave us freedom of choice, and even if we make the wrong choice, it should be okay. It is okay. Okay? So that means we have to live with a lot of variety and, I, and, 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 and diverse people. Sometimes that's difficult, especially for human beings because they're so narcissistic. And most people today have lost respect for others. Pretty sad, but that's the way it is. So going back to this system that we're having today, it is the beast system. We are, in the United States, the beast out of the earth. Of course, that makes Trump not the Antichrist because, really, most people believe Antichrist is the man of sin. See, they mix everything up. They, they, they're not clear. They're not looking at definition. When we are looking at biblically the definition of the man of sin, it is the Pope. It is Babylon the Great. It is the little horn of Daniel 7. I looked at Daniel 7 last night and I read it and I may just make a video about it because it's so significant. It shows you so clearly. Why don't you do that? Make a study about Daniel 7. And you will see that this last beast, this beast out of the sea in Daniel, because Daniel only saw four bees. It is there until Jesus returns and establishes his kingdom. Okay? So that means that last beast has to last that long. But how can that happen? I thought the fourth beast is Rome or whatever people believe. A beast is always an empire. Daniel says it's a king or a kingdom, but it's more than a king or a kingdom. It is an empire. It has many kings, many rulers, and yeah, you can be close to a kingdom with many rulers. But it's really a world kingdom because we see that the beast out of the sea, the last beast, takes everything. It crushes everything. It takes over everything in the world. That's what Europe did. So then Daniel didn't see this last beast. And we go to Revelation 13 and we see this last beast 
maybe fifth beast, you can call it fifth beast, this last empire that parallels at the end the fourth beast that makes it to the end, okay? But only at the end, when, when it gets a head wound. It has how many heads? I don't remember. Seven heads. And the last one was wounded. And during the seven head, last head, this uh, uh, beast out of the earth jumped in. And so this is where Trump comes out of, if he becomes president again. Well, actually, he's already been all, already been president. So we can also assume he was is already part of the system. Biden, same thing. They're not Antichrist, of course, because Antichrist is the Pope. He is man of sin. Even that is not really biblical that we can call the man of sin Antichrist. I made the videos. If you go uh, back... On BitChute, if you go back, there is a little further back. I, had, I made a series about Antichrist, and you can look at them. On YouTube, you have a playlist about Antichrist, where I made a whole bunch of videos about Antichrist and um, clarification, if you can watch that. But I'm continuing today with Trump because it's so important very, very important to understand where does he fit in. No, he is not the Antichrist. Antichrist, according to um, maybe dispensationalism, which is false. Okay? We will see that again today, how false dispensationalism is and how they used it. How they used it to really fool these so-called Christians, Protestants that are now lukewarm. They're lukewarm, and God's going to spit them out. If you're not repenting, and if you're not uh, thinking about who your first love is, now, really, is it first love, or is it just somebody that I picked to look, I look like I'm a Christian? It's possible. Maybe Jesus was never your first love. But we need to wake up. These fake Christians need to wake up. Maybe they will never. They Maybe they will never, never, never. Because they're so stuck. They have closed their eyes so many times to the truth. And so this dispensationalism was actually used for them to close to close their eyes. And now they're standing again in a crossroad, which they're getting deeper and deeper into some, yeah, swamp water. Deeper and deeper. I mean, there are so many deep waters that they are getting into. And one of them is this election. In the last election that we had, I was actually praying for the Christians that they that Trump will not make it. Why? Because they would have just worshipped him. Worshipped him as God. Really, think about it. Okay? And people say, oh no, we're not worshipping him as God. Well then, you worship him as Caesar. And that's what my picture was on my last video. Somebody asked me, um, well, who put the crown on Trump? And he was thinking it was the, um, the Zionists. And I responded to him. I said, no, that was the Christians, the fake Christians. They put the crown, the Caesar crown on Trump. They think that he is a prophet. They think that he is what, put there by God? We all should know that this system, and I hope I made a good uh, um, introduction to make that clear, that he is 
but that this system is from Satan. I hope so. If you're not convinced yet, please watch my videos, especially the ones on the Antichrist. I'm not making these things up. They are in the Bible. The reason why people don't understand these things is because they have been indoctrinated by dispensationalism to believe things that are not even, do, uh, even true. And now following Trump is like following the Antichrist. And I said like. And they don't even care. Oh no, Trump is our uh, our president. Uh, he's our candidate. Okay, that's what you want to believe. But it gets you into some pretty sticky situation. Because believe it or not, Trump is going to implement the mark of the beast if he will be president. I'll guarantee you that. He ha did not hesitate to implement the shot. Okay? He didn't hesitate to declare an emergency, to put us into lockdown. He did not hesitate to allow this guy up there who told us what we had to do with face covering and whatever. Yeah, he didn't. He listened. He was a little clown up there instead of standing up and saying no. He didn't do it. And he will do the same thing. Why? Because he works for the same people. Now, what we're having here is a tricky, what is it? a deception? It's a deception. Some people call it Hegelian dialectic. Some people call it that way. I, the Hegelian dialectic is a little more complicated, okay? It, it, it's just a simple thing. This is what has been done by governments, by our leaders, whoever those are, for years and years and years and years and years. It's actually Satan's strategy. Why don't you just call it Satan's strategy? Satan, Satan's strategy is, I will create a problem but I already have the solution. So I already know what I want. So I create the problem so the people will run for the solution. Or people think that the solution is what they need. Okay? So this is what Satan does all the time. So how does that apply to Trump, or even the pandemic. Well, they had to create a, a, a problem, right, in order for people to take their solution. What was the problem? The problem was, of course, pandemic. What was the solution? The pixie, the shot. That was their solution. They could have not gotten this, the, 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 the solution, for people to take the solution, unless they created the problem. And they created the problem, people. I don't care. I'm not going to talk about it. If you don't want to do your own research about that matter, then there's plenty of information out there. So I don't have to say it. However, they created it. Since this goes on YouTube, I have to be careful. So how does that apply now to Trump? Same way. I create, I, want, I know what the solution is, right? So I have to create a problem. Who's the problem? Well, Biden is the problem, right? I mean, Biden has brought our country down. I mean, he he's not even capable, I mean... He's put up there as a falling constantly and um, what else? Not even having things together, um, incompetent. I mean, he's probably going to be going down as the worst president we ever had. So I'm making a problem. 
And so pre people only have, you know, then they, of course, they already thought about the solution, or they already had the solution prior. So they put in Trump. So they have to make it the situation, they have to manipulate the situation in such way that most people pick Trump. Okay? And this is what they're creating right now. Of course, they can always create somebody else, you know, saying, okay, not we're going to put Gavin Newsom in there. But Gavin Newsom, nobody, at least most people don't know Gavin Newsom. And so I don't know. He, he has done some pretty bad stuff. I don't know what they're going to do, but it looks very much like that Trump has a lot of support at this point. It looks like it. And of course, the Trump supporters were prepared. Problem. In other words, I use Trump as this bad person that the um, globalists hate and the deep state hates, and he's going to clean out the deep state. So he's being portrayed as an opposite to this horrible, horrible stuff that people don't like. And he is going to be our savior that's going to fix it. But in reality, he is only put there as a controlled opposition. That's why I use it, controlled opposition, right? He's put there as a controlled opposition. Because he is controlled. People think, oh, he's neutral and he's on the side of people. No, he is not. He's never been on the side of people. He's been hiding his true support a very long time. Who's supporting him? Bannon? He used to be... Um, one of his advisors? Is it Steve Bannon? Very strict Catholic. When you look at his war room, I think he is on YouTube, his war room, he always has Christian, not Christian, Catholic symbols, Catholic uh, pictures and stuff of Christ and different things in the background. And they're really like icons. Christian icons, not Christian, sorry, Catholic icons. He's a very strong Catholic. I don't know, is he, a, is he even a Jesuit? Is he Jesuit trained? He supports uh, Trump. Pence, Catholic, right? I know they, they kind of split a little bit, or at least they made it look like it. You know, and so now he's going to pick another vice president, most likely Catholic. You will see. There's one right now on the table. What is her name? The new, it's a woman, and uh, she's Catholic too. Yeah, I mean, no, don't, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Trump is only a puppet, and Trump is only a, what would you call him? He is definitely a, a player. He plays, he's playing, he plays very good his role. Plays very good his role. But this is what we're having. We have control opposition, and they made it clear that you don't make a connection between the shadow government and Trump. I mean, very clear, because everybody else treats him like an enemy, which is not true. People, that is not true. He is not an enemy of the other presidents. They make it look like it. So you can pick him and you can be thinking that, oh, he is different. He is not a globalist. And yet his 
uh, people, the people that allow him to be president are globalists. They want a global government. They want one person on top under the Pope. And what do you think Biden, I mean, um, Trump did? Did he go to the Pope and bow down to the Pope and kiss his hands? Of course he did. In fact, he did it when you remember the last elections before the last elections. I think it was not the last elections, the one before that, when he ran with um, Hillary Clinton. They both had a dinner with the Bishop of New York. Both of them. Bishop of New York had a big dinner before the election. And both of them were invited. Why? Because the Pope makes the elects the president. That's why. Because the Pope is now in charge again of the United No, he has been in charge for a long time. I would think at least, like I said, between the Civil War and the First War. Maybe before or during the First World War, when, who was it that signed up for the First World War? Was it Woodrow Wilson? That's when it started. That's when the president gave up their power to the global elite which is, which they have definitely the Pope on top. You know, somebody said, oh, isn't somebody said that um, the United States still belongs to England? Well, maybe, maybe, but what I see more, and again, this book by Charles Chiniqui, Charles Chiniqui, 50 years in the Roman Church, I see more, and other books, too, I see more, of course, that the Jesuits, the Vatican, was the one that infiltrated into the government, not only government, financial system. Absolutely. That's why we have our Federal Reserve Bank, because they infiltrated. So, yeah, started after the Civil War. That's why they killed Abraham Lincoln put their candidate in there. They have done that since that time. And we think, oh, it's, we are voting. We are voting for sure. No, it's called controlled opposition. And they do a good job. They could do a good job to control that opposition and make sure that opposition plays exactly the role that they want. And Trump is actually a great candidate for him because he's a good he's a good player he's a good player he can play his role most of the time very well and he doesn't mind being in the shadow of the presidents when they're saying oh we don't want this guy why not what has he done to them what has it done? Every one of them? Every one are sticking together. Okay? The Bush, the Clintons. Uh, um, yeah, Bush and Clinton, you know, they're buddy buddies, right? They're sticking together. But Trump is such a bad person when we know that Trump was extremely uh, good friends with the Clintons before his presidency. It's, it's all fake, people. It's all fake. And we need to wake up. Now, I don't think I can wake any of these hypocrites up. And when I talk about hypocrites, I talk about these Christians. They call themselves Christians, mainstream Christians, whatever they are. They go to church on Sundays, sometimes not even on Sundays, but, oh, yeah, we're Christians. What does it give them to call themselves Christians when they're not even following Jesus? And I'm talking about following Jesus. You can't follow two people. 
The Bible says clearly you can't follow two masters. Just can't. People, make up your mind. Who are you going to follow? And when you follow Jesus, you have to really make a commitment to him. You have to make a commitment. You really have to say, no, I'm not following this false political system. But of course, we have also been so brainwashed to believe that it's our duty and our uh, yeah duty to vote and our duty to uh, participate in this political system. Is it true? No, it's not. No, it's not. The Bible doesn't say go vote. Of course, we have then Roman 13, right? And I'm going to finish with that because I think that's important. Because some people then say, oh, how about Roman 13? Roman 13, I believe, and it's only, I don't know how many um, verses. Okay, I looked it up. Roman 13, 1 through uh, 7. 1 through 7. It says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. And I believe that part was not originally in Paul's letter. If we're looking at that letter, Romans we look at the section before 13, chapter 12, and we look what comes afterwards after verse 7 in 13. It says, in 8, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another, for whosoever loves others has fulfilled the law. We see really clearly that that subject really has nothing to do with the government. And if we look at the one before 13, we also see that that subject has nothing to do with government, but rather with how we live our lives in love. Okay? How we treat our neighbors. So I believe this section is put in there by somebody. No doubt. It, it can be, uh, people are going to say, well, but this is the, you know, this is the word of God and God will not allow for anything to, you know, uh, wrongly put in there. No, that's not true. We know for sure that some of the translations are not correct. So somebody made errors even in the translation. We have so many different translations, people. And there's people that scream, oh, only the King James, because they say, oh, the other ones are not good translations, incorrect translations. So why would uh, something in the original text not have been changed? We know that these texts have been copied and copied and copied and recopied in the past. For what? 1,700 years, 1,800 years, um, 17, maybe 1,600 years. They have been copied and recopied in monastery monasteries. Okay? So they had an original text, what, 2,000 years ago? And in monasteries, monasteries, Catholic monasteries, they were recopied and recopied and recopied. Somebody had to write them. Okay? They couldn't print them until 1500. They were not printed. Okay, let's say 1500 years. They had to recopy them. And you don't think somebody may, can may have made a mistake? Yes, they could have. And who is telling us something is wrong? Only the Holy Spirit can tell us, hey, there is something wrong here. Check into this a little deeper. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important. Because the Holy Spirit will tell us there's something wrong here. And I'll tell you right now, when I use the Holy Spirit, there's something wrong here. 
why it doesn't make sense. Because what I've I started from the beginning, I said from the beginning, people, that the political system today is put in there by God, because that's what it says here. No, by Satan. So there is a contradiction. It doesn't get in my brain if there's a contradiction. I don't know if you've been used to uh, living with contradictions. I don't. And so if it says this political system is put there by Satan, then it's put there by Satan. Not by God. God allows it. But when Satan puts something there, it's not correct. Satan works with very uh, uh, unfair uh, methods. He deceives. He kills. He devours. He tortures. That's what he does. And that's what he uses in his political system, especially deception. I just talked about all these deceptions. You know, you create constantly your, your problem in order for people to run after the solution that you have already put in, I mean, you already had in uh, planned from the beginning. It's constant deception in this system. And if we're not on top of it, we're going to get sucked into it. And if we have already allowed lies into our church, we get swept with it. You know what? Pope knew that. Even during Abraham Lincoln's time, when Charles Chiniqui wrote, priest in the Catholic Church, wrote about the intention of the Catholic Church, how they can overcome Protestantism and how they can bring down the United States. That's the methods they're going to use and more. And they have used them and they have been and they have been successful. And of course, American Protestants, that's all a name. It's on, only a name still. Oh, we're Christians. We're Christians. We're running after the Trump. We're putting Trump on a on a throne. Yeah, crowning him Caesar. We want no. We want Caesar. You know who'd said the same thing? I said that before. When they had Jesus before Pilate, and Pilate said to the Jews, "Here is your guys' king." And what did they say? We have nobody else but Caesar. And that's what the Christians do today. God again is presenting them with, hey, here's your king, Jesus. And all they're screaming is, no, Trump is our Caesar. Or Trump is our king. That's what they're doing. People, I'm coming to an end. I've talked enough. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Really. Use the Holy Spirit. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You can forget it. You can just totally forget it. 